Lawmakers seeking transparency from the state heard new details today about what went wrong during the missile threat mistake. And at times, it sure got heated. So here's what's happened so far. The state has suspended all future drills of this nature. Two people must now activate and verify missile launch notifications. And a cancellation command has been put in place to prevent the long delay in getting out a false alarm message. Investigators are recommending changes to the software to make it harder to send out public alerts. Bridget Namata joins us now. And Bridget, what else did you learn today? Well, unacceptable, not going to happen again. These were phrases consistently spoken by Governor David Ige and state emergency management officials at today's public hearing. They say the mistake has exposed critical pukas in the system that they're actively addressing, one of them being why some cell phone users never got the alert. Saturday's ballistic missile text alert caused widespread panic across the state. Yet, some cell phone users never got the alert. FCC investigator James Wiley told lawmakers there are three reasons why it happened. The user turned its emergency alerts off, it was an issue with your cell phone provider, or what Wiley called radio frequency propagation. For whatever reason, in an area where you couldn't receive uh, the alert message, uh, the subsequent cancellation of the initial alert would have prevented you from receiving that alert when you uh, regained service. Brigadier General Kenneth Hara, who Governor Ige put in charge of improving Haima's disaster preparedness, told lawmakers today he already made suggestions on improving the software used for disaster alerts. Instead of using a drop down menu to choose alerts, which the employee did on Saturday, Hara wants Haima to display color coded icon choices. He wants the ballistic missile test on a completely separate software system. Another recommendation I told them to check on is to look at that two person rule. It's not just I click and then you click, it's you need to provide credentials. Hara wants to add additional verification steps in the two person process to ensure the proper text message is sent out to the public. Now, one of the questions that came up today was if we can still get emergency messages if there's heavy call volume, if lots of people are using their phones. Yes. The FCC assures everyone that the emergency alerts run on a different frequency. So even if you can't get through on a call or text, the alerts will go out. Okay. Great to hear that. Thank you, Bridget.